Hey everyone, this time I'm going to talk in English uh, simply because th this time I will talk a little bit about our overland truck build and a lot of the automotive terms uh, actually I learned in the US when tinkering on cars and trucks so I don't fully like know all the German words for the automotive terms or I might have forgotten them where we are so we are in California in Calaveras County uh, near Arnold we did a little trip a little day trip for a picnic so we're actually not camping or we are not staying overnight but yeah so our goal was to scope out a little a couple of camping possible camping spots or off-road trails yeah don't worry this fireplace or this fire is not from us this was from a previous person yeah so while we're here for shooting this little video we also collected a bunch of trash uh, it's crazy how many how much people are trashing or littering around here uh, which is kind of sad since this is a national national forest now i will talk a little, little bit more about our camping and off-roading setup yeah so this is a truck that we purchased a few months ago it's a 2011 nissan frontier pro 4x so we were thinking a lot about what kind of vehicle we want to get yeah, so we're researching online a lot uh, and what we want to do is we want to like definitely not spend too much money on an overland or traveling vehicle. Um, we did not want to have a van because we wanted to have a, uh, a pickup truck so we can actually also use it for hauling things around and stuff. Yeah, we also did not want to pay too much money on a full-size truck. And as you know, trucks are pickup trucks are crazy expensive right now, especially or even used pickup trucks so, so yeah so we so we were looking for a pretty cheap used uh, mid-sized pickup truck that was still pretty capable for off-roading when you talk about pickup trucks you definitely have to talk about uh, Toyota Comas and we really wanted to get a Toyota Coma in the beginning um, but we noticed very quickly you know they are actually very very expensive even like old ones used ones and we could definitely afford one, but we just did not want too much to spend too much money on uh, just the vehicle. But actually, we wanted to like have something that we can build and improve. Um, and we're, so we're looking for kind of a nice, nice platform. Uh, the other option would have been uh, a Ford Ranger, and honestly, it might have been uh, a good other option. But yeah, so but just looking online and talking with people. We found interest in the Nissan Frontier platform. Yeah. So we were a little skeptical at first because you know you know and see Nissan Frontiers uh you know as as rental trucks, as cheap rental trucks. So and we were not too sure okay how how reliable is it going to be. But actually when we did some research in it, Nissan Frontiers are actually pretty reliable vehicles, even coming somewhat close to Toyota Tacomas. The only thing uh, why Nissan Frontiers are probably not that popular is that Nissan Frontiers are pretty dated. So actually just right now the Nissan Frontier 2022 came out, which is the complete redesign. But when we actually got the vehicle or when we were in the market for a vehicle, um, the, the Nissan Frontier was a very dated vehicle. Um, not that it was bad or anything, it was more like the vehicle itself the interior the exterior has not been pretty much changed since 2005 or i don't know when when there was a major redesign but pretty much it's the same vehicle as it was in 2005 but for us personally especially for like traveling we didn't care too much and we were also fine if we didn't have any fancy features um because we can just upgrade them ourselves right um actually on the inside uh, a lot of things changed meanwhile like the vehicle got better engines several upgrades um, but it's still pretty much the same vehicle yeah so again so this is the 2011 nissan frontier and we went with a 2011 because i think up to 2010 i might be not 100 percent sure on what model year but up to 2010 the nissan frontiers had a lot of had actually a design issue with the cooling system um, and uh, the danger was that uh, um, coolant would actually mix with with engine oil and I think it's called uh, like the milkshake problem or something like that 
Um, and it was sort of a design fail um, that was fixed in 2010 models. So we were looking for like vehicles um, above the 2011. Another thing that we wanted to look for was the Pro 4X trim. Uh, the reason being, so the Pro 4X comes with the 4x4 uh, with two high, uh, sorry, two high, four high, and uh, four low, as well as a rear differential locker. And that was also important to us because that gives us actually more um, capability off road. I mentioned the stickers here. Um, that was kind of like a fun idea we had. Um, we wanted to put a flag on our truck for our citizenships. So, because my wife is an American citizen and a Canadian citizen, and I'm a German citizen. So, but of course, we want to make sure that the American flag is on top since we're in America. Sorry, I didn't really clean up the interior, but that's pretty much how it looks like on the inside. Um, on this model, I really, really love that it's actually the, the black interior and the premium interior. So it has the leather seats with a Pro 4X stitching. Um, and it looks a little bit better than the other ones. I personally don't like the sort of like the beige brownish interior. It looks, I think it looks pretty ugly. So I'm really happy that we were able to find a model with the black black interior. So one of the very first things that we did to a vehicle is uh, throwing out the stock radio. And the stock radio was pretty much, it was really, really dated. So one of the first things that we actually did is throwing up, um, yeah, throwing up the, the radio, which was just a CD player um, and a radio pretty much. And what we got is we got this like um, this new frame or cutout. Um, and then we got a Pioneer radio and um, hooked it up. So, and the nice thing is we have uh, Apple CarPlay. So we have all the access to our apps, for example, to Gaia GPS. Um, so this helps us with navigating off-road. Um, off and yeah. So one thing that I wish I did is I wish I went with a different radio um, because this one only supports Apple CarPlay. And my wife actually has Android, so um, I did not make a good purchase decision. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the with the system. I might in the future change it, sell this unit, and get a new uh, or different Pioneer that also supports Android CarPlay. Another thing I want to mention is uh, this model uh, in this year did not come with a backup camera. So, so what I did is up. Um, uh, install a license plate backup camera so if i switch into reverse um, i hooked up a backup camera to the reverse lights so it automatically turns on the uh, the backup camera this is the backup camera it's pretty much just a license plate camera uh, it was literally just like i think 25 or 30 bucks on amazon um, and it's actually pretty good it's uh, hd um, and basically what i'm doing is i'm running it uh, sort of through a hole here um, underneath the frame into the driver cabin um, through the firewall. There's a hole in the firewall um, and wired it up to the radio, the aftermarket radio. And yeah, the aftermarket radio supports the um, backup camera. So yeah, and down here it comes with like all the important switches. So I have my uh, two wheel drive. I have the four high and four low. Um, I have uh, a rear differential locker. I do have um, hill descent control um, and I can turn uh, VDC on and off. And also a really nice feature that this model, this Pro 4X trim, comes with uh, heated seats in the front, which is pretty cool. Yeah, so taking a look under the hood, um, this is the V6 4, 4, 4 liter engine, uh, VQ engine from Nissan. And um, I have to say I'm really happy with the engine, with the power. Uh, I think it produces 270 horsepower, um, which is pretty good in the midsize segment, even, even still today. The only downside of this particular engine is that it actually consumes a lot of gas. So I think it is like 17 miles per gallon um, if, you know, if you don't have any load or anything on. I think right now I get around like 15 or 16. 
um, but I also currently have my winter tires on. So, and obviously the, the tent uh, in the back. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a pickup truck, so uh, what to expect. But other than that, I'm really happy with the engine. Um, it's also uh, to be considered like one of the most reliable engines, at least in the mid-size pickup truck market. Um, so a lot of people, um, a lot of people, especially if you look online, are able to um, drive like 200 or 300,000 miles um, with these engines and yeah, very reliable and relatively easy to maintain. Also, the transmission is actually pretty good. Uh, I really like the transmission. It's pretty accurate. Uh, it shifts really smoothly. I'm really happy with the transmission. Uh, it's not the CVT transmission um, from like other Nissan vehicles. Uh, this is like a regular um, five-speed automatic transmission. So looking under the truck, um, one of the things that you have to be really aware if you buy a Nissan Frontier, um, which is also true for other pickup trucks, is that um, there is a danger for the axle bearing seals uh, to blow. So the reason is there is a, a valve in your rear axle, in your rear end, and this uh, vent, vent's purpose is to let in air, air in and out, um, especially with like quick temperature changes <clears throat> when the fluid heats up in the rear end. So, and this vent clogs up uh, very easily. So from like raw dirt or other things, um, which is why the truck is not really ready for um, going through like deeper waters uh, that go above the rear end. Um, and uh, basically, but even if you don't do that, uh, a lot of these trucks have the issue that um, the, the axle seals blow. <clears throat> so what I did is I installed a, a breather mod. You can buy it from like several like off-road um, shops. And uh, basically there's a hose attached to it now, which goes uh, up to behind the rear light. And yeah, I'm not going to take the rear light off, but basically behind the rear light, um, basically the, the hose runs to behind the rear light. Um, and the, the goal is that the opening of the hose is um, sort of like on a high level so that if you cross water, that no dirty water goes into your rear end. So, and the, the end of the hose actually has a fuel filter attached so that no dirt comes in. So yeah, for the suspension upgrade, we will do a two inch lift in the front and a one and a half inch lift in the rear. Um, this will help us uh, get some more ground clearance and better approach and departure angles as well as, uh, as, well as better break, um, break off angles. And um, uh, the kit that we ordered is from All Dogs Off-Road. Um, I can put a link in the description there as well. Um, I will also post a video later on how to install it. Um, and then I want to fit uh, a little bit larger tires. So right now the tire size, and that's the standard tire size for the Pro 4X. That's a 265 by 75 uh, R16 tires. That's a, almost like a 32 inches. I think that's like 31.7 or something. If uh, I hope I don't lie here. But yeah, but I will upgrade it to a 285 by 75 um, R16, which is almost three inches. Um, it's pretty much one inch larger than um, than the OEM tires. So right now I'm running snow tires on there because here in the Sierra Nevada, we uh, do some snow off-roading once in a while. The other nice thing about this vehicle is it comes with stock um, roof rack bars so um, or roof carrier so um, it's it's pretty easy to attach things on top we haven't used it much yet but what we could probably do is have uh, a roof basket on top uh, of the vehicle to carry like a spare tire or like boxes or things like that yeah so coming to our tent um, the tent that we bought is a smitty built overlander tent 
it's pretty much one of the cheapest tents you can buy. This tent has been recommended to me by by a friend has been recommended uh, to me by a friend and also online reviews. Um, it's a made in China tent, but I have to say I'm really impressed with the tent. Um, it's uh, you know it goes very well on the truck bed. Um, it comes with a lot of nice features. Um, and yeah, we have used it even below freezing, obviously with the right sleeping bags and the and the tent heater. And yeah, it's uh, been treating us really well. The only downside of it is it takes a little bit to set up and tear down. And that's typically the point where um, tents become more expensive. Like some tents pop up in literally like five to 10 seconds. Uh, this one takes maybe like five minutes to set up or tear down. Um, but if you practice with it, I think uh, it goes pretty well. For attaching the tent to the bed, I actually went or like ordered a, a bed rack from a local metal fabrication shop. The reason is a lot of the bed racks can get really, really expensive. So in this, this rack, including taxes, I think I got for like $400 um, made by a local fabrication shop. Um, I can actually add the link in the description. And uh, the bed rack um, actually came uh, just as a bare bare metal uh, bed rack and I painted it black. And uh, the cool thing about this, um, so the truck, uh, the Nissan pickup truck, they often come with the Nissan utility rack, which is a bed, um, which is a, is a back bed sliding or attachment system. Um, and yeah, the metal shop, metal shop made some mounts for me so that I can actually attach it to this rail system, which is pretty neat. Okay, so this is the inside of the tent. Um, so the nice thing about the tent is actually that it comes already comes with a mattress, which is pretty good. But what we also did is we went with a, a foam topper, memory foam topper. Um, and yeah, so we have some extra comfort. So this one has like gel in it, so the gel is sort of cold. So don't buy gel memory foam. <laughs> yeah, so what we so what what I found to work pretty well is to um, add sort of like an insulating layer on top. Um, so that works pretty well when it's cold. So, so yeah, so in this tent, yeah, we have been even in there below freezing and we've been fine. With, this, with the little tent heater. Yeah, with the heater, of course. Well, we um, have to put it on for like a minute and then it warms it up and we're fine. Yeah. So yeah, so this is the inside. Um, it has like little vents up here. Um, that we can open up and that's actually very useful for the uh, Mr. Buddy heater because the propane heater actually creates condensation um, but with that and having a little bit of the window cracked or like the, the door cracked um, we don't really have any condensation issues the other thing that is nice about this tent is that we can open this up and then you can see there is the rain cover that we can open up if we want to um, and then you can like if you don't have a rainy night you can actually uh, go see the stars the tent also came with this really really nice light bar up here which is pretty cool um, and it's usb powered so we can just plug an echo pack battery pack in here um, just power everything like our devices and even even this And so this is the tent uh, folded up. One of the reasons why I didn't go with the very high bed rack is I still want to keep sort of a low profile uh, for gas mileage. I didn't want, didn't want the tent to stick out too much. So it's sort of like uh, a little bit hidden in the profile. It sticks out a little bit. Um, but other than that, it's uh, I think it's pretty good this way. Another thing that I did um, as an upgrade. So a lot of the bed racks um, don't have this but uh, by law you're supposed to at least in california i don't know about other states in the us but you're supposed to have a, a visible brake light and the tent is actually hiding the brake light from uh, above the bed 
So what I did is I bought myself a cheap um, LED light, uh, which is by the way dot approved, and um, got some some clamps for for the bars. And what I did is I actually wired everything up to the brake lights. Um, and this way I have a fully legal working brake light. So one of the most important things we take with us is the Mr. Buddy heater, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a propane heater. So, and this propane heater um, gets really, really warm. So like if you are in the tent below freezing, it, it gets, it, it heats up the tent pretty quickly, sometimes even too hot. So sometimes we just turn, we just, heat it up the, the tent first and keep it a bit warm and then it, we're sort of good for the night. Sometimes in the middle of the night we have to turn it on one more time uh, if it's below freezing but anytime when it's above freezing we don't really need it in the tent simply because we also have very good sleeping bags. Yeah to power the Mr. Buddy heater you can one, use one of these like standard Coleman propane tanks. Um, you can get them from Walmart. Uh, they're pretty convenient to use and relatively cheap. Uh, however, what we did instead, um, since we did not want to uh, change these out all the time, and the thing is, those tanks are depleted very quickly. So what we actually did is we got a propane tank um, with a hose. Um, for the propane heater, you have to get a very special hose. Uh, you have to do quite some research to get the exact right one, um, because sometimes you need a filter um that you attach between the the hose and the heater the reason being sometimes the um, the rubber material from these hoses they actually release oil or liquid and they will destroy the heater um so we did some research to get the right exact hose um, this is actually from mr heater uh that does not have this problem so this this um, hose uh, will still stay, stay soft in very cold weather. It doesn't become hard. At the same time, it also does not release any oil to clog up the heater. All right, we're back home. Um, one thing I totally forgot to talk about is the recovery gear we have. So one thing we always carry with us um, are attraction boards. So we got some cheap ones on Amazon. Uh, the brand is Expo. Um, it's absolutely a cheap Chinese brand. Um, it really had really good reviews on Amazon and YouTube from people. Uh, these were definitely like under $100, uh, but people have been really happy with them. We have not used them so far, but um, we have heard really good things about this specific one. Um, yeah, we didn't want to pay like $300, $300 plus for like a very expensive set. Um, so, so I'm pretty sure they will do the job. Um, so then we have more stuff behind our seat here. Uh, so one of the things we have is we have a sort of a bull ring or a shackle um, that we can attach to the hitch. Um, so we could pull uh, people out if they're stuck somewhere or if some or if we are ourselves are stuck somewhere. Um, so that's one thing we also let's actually put that here so uh, one thing we have we have a recovery rope um yeah pretty basic one yeah we also have our cat here um that we take with us and she'll pull us out of the mud if we have trouble uh i guess she would probably just sit there and meow but yeah, so we have some more stuff underneath the, our seat. Um, yeah, some, some tools, uh, some ropes, um, and also some shackles as well. Yeah, and so under the truck we have uh, one recovery point, um, which I think will do the job. Um, however, what I'm thinking of doing is actually upgrading to a, a winch carrier, which actually adds two shackle mounts. Um, but but yeah but we'll see if we are actually going to need it another tool that we always carry with us is a um tire tire bleeder so basically this allows us to air down um this was a pretty pretty this is a pretty cheap and basic one yeah another thing we got on amazon is a 
relatively cheap but pretty good um, air compressor. So I think the brand is tire well. It's also a pretty cheap Chinese one, but it has had really good reviews from people. So, so yeah, so this is our air compressor. So this allows us um, after airing down uh, to air up again. Um, and yeah, it takes, takes a little bit per tire. It's a, so it's a 12 volt air compressor. Um, so basically you just plug this one in to your, um, so yeah, so, so you basically plug this, uh, you basically plug this into your cigarette lighter um, and you can turn it on and off. And yeah, it works pretty well um, for airing up again. So yeah, that was it for the truck. Um, yeah, so we're pretty new to the game, so please let us know if you have any tips um, for us as well. Uh, any concerns or yeah, or feedback, um, we'd really appreciate it. And thank you for watching.